Hi, my name is Basir. In this video, I'll be teaching you about drawbacks of electronic theory of valence. I'll also teach you about valence shell electron pair repulsion theory from chapter 8, chemical bonding, class 10, Telangana state syllabus. Electronic theory of valence have two drawbacks. Drawbacks are things that electronic theory of valence could not explain. The first thing that it could not explain is why the bond length and the bond energies are different when the atoms that are involved in covalent bonding are different. Let us first understand the terms bond length and bond energies. Bond length is nothing but the distance between the nucleus of two atoms that are involved in covalent bonding. So these two atoms here, right here, this oxygen atom and the other oxygen atom, they are connected through a covalent bond. The distance between the nucleus of these two atoms which are connected to each other through a covalent bond, the distance between the nucleus of these two atoms is nothing but the bond length or the bond distance. Let us also understand the term, the other term which is bond energy. Bond energy is nothing but the energy required to break this bond. Bond energy is also known as bond dissociation energy. So bond dissociation energy is nothing but the energy that is required to break this covalent bond. So the first drawback that electronic theory of valence could not explain is it failed to understand why the bond length and bond energies are different when the atoms that are involved in covalent bonding are different. The charge of the electron is negative and the electron of oxygen should not be different from the electron of hydrogen. So a covalent bond is being formed by sharing of two identical electrons, two electrons which, which are no different from one another. So if the electrons that are being shared are not different at all, the electron of oxygen and the electron of hydrogen, they are one and the same, then why the bond length and the bond energy is different? Practically, it has been found that the bond length and the bond energies are different when the atoms that are involved in covalent bonding are different. Let us see this chart right here. Bond length is, is expressed in nanometer or Armstrong units. One Armstrong is 10 to the power of minus 10 meter and one nanometer is 10 to the power of minus 9 meters. The main thing that I want to point out is the hydrogen-hydrogen bond length and hydrogen fluorine bond length. This hydrogen is sharing one electron, the other hydrogen is sharing one electron and by share, sharing of two electrons a covalent bond was formed. Now hydrogen hydrogen bond length is 0 0.74 but here the same hydrogen atom if, if it combines with fluorine instead of hydrogen the bond length is changing. Instead of 0 0.74 it is 0 0.918 and the same hydrogen if if it combines with chlorine instead of hydrogen or instead of fluorine if it combines with chlorine the bond length again changes to 1.27. So the electronic theory of valence could not explain why the bond length is changing when the atoms that are involved in bonding are different. When hydrogen is combining with fluorine the bond length is 0.918 but when hydrogen combines with chlorine the bond length is 1.27. Bond energy is expressed in kilojoule per mole units. So hydrogen hydrogen bond energy is 436 kilojoule per mole while the bond energy between hydrogen and fluorine bond is 570 kilojoule. If hydrogen is combining with chlorine then the energy that is required to break this bond is 432 kilojoule per mole. So we ideally so we see that the bond length and the bond energy they are changing when the atoms that are involved in bonding are different. The bond length and bond energy is different when the atoms that are involved in covalent bonding are different. That's the first drawback of uh, electronic theory of valence. That the first that's the first thing that electronic theory of valence could not explain. The second drawback that electronic theory of valence could not explain is that it could not explain why the chlorine beryllium chlorine bond angle in beryllium chloride 
is 180 degrees why the bond angle in boron trifluoride is 120 degrees why the bond angle in methane is 109 degrees 28 minutes why the bond angle in ammonia is 107 degrees 18 minutes why the bond angle in water is 104 degrees 31 minutes by not being able to explain the bond angles it wasn't able to explain the shapes of the molecules also before you understand the term bond angle I would like you to understand the term central atom now in this diagram here let's concentrate on this diagram right here boron is connected to three fluorine atoms through single covalent bonds right so the, the boron is connected to this fluorine atom through a covalent bond boron is again connected to the other fluorine atom through a covalent bond and boron is again connected to the third fluorine atom through a covalent bond right now central atom is the atom to which all the other atoms are connected to through a covalent bond so all the fluorine atoms the three fluorine atoms that we see here are connected to boron by covalent bonds through a covalent bond and that is why boron is the central atom here so central atom is nothing but the atom to which all the other atoms are connected to through covalent bonds now this is the angle that we are talking about the angle between fluorine boron and fluorine is 120 degrees but why is the angle between fluorine boron and fluorine this angle is 120 degrees is something that electronic theory of valence could not explain valence shell electron pair repulsion theory could successfully explain the bond angles and it could thereby predict the shapes of the molecules let us now learn about valence shell electron pair repulsion theory valence shell electron pair repulsion theory considers the lone pair electrons and the bond pair electrons as electron charge clouds that repel each other right the, both of them they are negatively charged particles both are electrons the electrons that are in, in the bond pair and the lone pair of electrons they repel each other and then they go as far as possible so that the repulsion between them is minimum the lone pair of electrons here the lone pair of electron it is attracted only it is attracted by only one nucleus like if you see the lone pair of electrons here the nit nitrogen uh, has one lone pair of electron in ammonia molecule nitrogen has one lone pair of electron so this lone pair of electron is attracted by the nucleus of nitrogen atom obviously nucleus is made up of protons and neutrons protons are positively charged particles positively charged particles will attract the negative charged particles right opposite charges they attract each other so these two electrons that you see here the elect the lone pair of electrons the pair of electrons which are not involved in bonding are known as lone pair of electrons right so these lone pair of electrons are attracted only by the nucleus of one atom which is nitrogen itself but the bonded pair of electrons the, these two electrons that you see here this pair of electrons is the bonded pair of electrons these this bond pair of electron is attracted by nitrogen at by the nucleus of nitrogen atom and these and they are also attracted by the nucleus of hydrogen atom so the bond pair electrons are attracted by the nucleus of both the atoms while the lone pair of electrons are attracted by only one atom and that is one reason why the lone pair of electrons will occupy larger space around the central atom valence shell electron pair repulsion theory says that by counting the elect the number of electrons in bond pairs and lone pair will be able to predict the arrangement of the electrons around the central atom and by doing so will be able to find out the shape of the molecule let us consider the formation of beryllium chloride in beryllium chloride beryllium is connected to the two chlorine atoms by single covalent bonds so the central atom beryllium has two covalent bonds we know that 
the bond the electrons in the bond pair they repel each other obviously electrons are negatively charged particles and like charges they repel each other therefore the electrons in the bond pair obviously they should go as far as possible they should stay as far as possible so that the repulsion is minimum so it, so valence shell electron pair repulsion theory says that if the central atom has two bond pairs without any lone pairs on the central atom then the bond angle has to be 180 degrees if the central atom has three bond pairs one two three three bond pairs and no lone pairs on the central atom then the bond angle should be 120 degrees so if you can count the number of electrons in the bond pair and the electrons in the lone pair the valential electron pair repulsion theory says that you will be able to uh, decide the arrangement of electrons on around the central atom and thereby you will be able to decide the shape of the molecule it says that in if the central atom has two bond pairs they should be separated by 180 degree angle and the shape will be linear linear means a straight line like another straight line if the central atom has three bond pairs and no lone pairs then the bond angle should be 120 degrees the bond angle should be 120 degrees here and the three fluorine atoms they'll be in the three corners of the triangle boron trifluoride molecule is the bond angle should be 120 degrees and the fluorine atoms they they are at three vertices of a triangle so the shape is trigonal planar let us closely uh, look at beryllium chloride and boron trifluoride in beryllium chloride we see that we have beryllium now have four electrons which means it is not achieving octet Octet means it should have eight electrons in the valence orbit, right? Beryllium is forming beryllium chloride, but beryllium is not able to attain octet. It is not able to have eight electrons in the valence orbit. It is only having four electrons in the valence orbit after the covalent bond formation. So such molecules are known as electron deficient molecules. Deficiency means they are lacking in something, right? Boron trifluoride. Boron after the formation of boron trifluoride boron has two four six six valence electrons it is also not attaining octet it is not having eight electrons in the outermost orbit and that's the reason even boron trifluoride is electron deficient meaning they have less number of electrons than what is required to attain octet if the central atom have four covalent bonds if the central atom has four covalent bonds then the bond angle has to be 109 degrees 28 minutes once again if the central atom has two covalent bonds and there are no lone pairs then the bond angle is 180 degrees if the central atom have three bond pairs then the bond angle is 120 degrees if the central atom has four bond pairs and no lone pairs on the central atom then the bond angle is 109 degrees 28 minutes if the central atom has lone pair then the bond angle further decreases why why because the repulsion between lone pair and the bond pair is greater than the repulsion between bond pair and bond pair the repulsion between bond pair and bond pair is slightly less than the repulsion between bond lone pair and bond pair so that this angle will get decreased so once again uh, if the central atom has two bonds and there are no lone pair of electrons on the central atom then the bond angle has to be 180 degrees if the central atom has three bonds and there are no lone pair of electrons on the central atom then the bond angle should be 120 degrees if the central atom has four bonds and there are no lone pair of electrons on the central atom then the bond angle has to be 109 degrees 28 minutes if the central atom has a lone pair of electron then the bond angle decreases now in in ammonia you can see that the central atom has three bond pairs so one bond means two electrons so two electrons two electrons four electrons another two electrons six electrons six electrons from the bond pairs and then the lone pair pair means two right so the lone pair has two more electrons so in the, in total there are eight electrons right so if there are eight electrons the bond angle has to be 109 degrees 28 minutes but because the central atom has a lone pair of electron the repulsion between the lone pair of electron and the will be greater than the bond pair and bond pair repulsion so the bond pair and bond pair repulsion is a little less than the bond pair the, than the lone pair and bond pair repulsion that's the reason this angle has to get decreased so instead of being 
instead of uh, the, the angle should have been 109 degrees 28 minutes but the angle got decreased and it became 107 degrees 48 minutes now in water molecule we see that the bond angle is 104 degrees 31 minutes why why because oxygen has two lone pairs and the repulsion between lone pair and lone pair is much higher than the repulsion between lone pair and bond pair I will give you the sequence here lone pair and lone pair repulsion is greater than lone pair and bond pair repulsion lone pair and bond pair repulsion is greater than bond pair bond pair repulsion so lone pair and lone pair will have very high repulsion so this lone pair and the other lone pair they have very high repulsion when when they repel each other the bond angle which get, will get further decreased so from 107 it gets further decreased to 104 degrees 31 minutes right so there is slight distortion in the angles when there are lone pairs on the central atom these charts have been prepared by Sumaya and Mariam. Video editing is done by Faisal Khan. I'll see you all in the next video. Until then, goodbye.